we're going to focus on utilizing title block templates that we created through another video. So this happens to be our ANSI A and B title block template and we're going to utilize it on this existing drawing. So instead of having to create a drawing we're just going to utilize it on this drawing and move forward. So as we begin what we find is that this drawing is complete but if we were to actually just go to a layout and click on the layout tab we would get a drawing and it would be inside a viewport and everything would look out okay and we can utilize this but it doesn't have the finished qualities of having a title block associated with it so instead of having to draw a title block every single time we use a template and so to apply this template we begin where we currently are under the layout we'll right mouse click and we're going to grab the title block from a template. The thing is is that if your title block template isn't on this list, this is your this is buried inside under uh, your C colon users username under app data, Autodesk, AutoCAD, and it's really a long list of where this is buried at. So here's the really simple way to pop it up. First, we're going to go ahead and go to our AutoCAD 2015 folder, and I've already created or created the title block template, which was from the previous video. And so we're going to right mouse click this title block template and copy it. We're going to click back into this field here, right mouse click, and paste it. So now I've effectively copied the title block template into the template folder that allows me to use it. So instead of trying to save it under here and save it somewhere else, save it in the spot that you know where it's located. You can always copy and paste it here inside the AutoCAD buried template folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And what happens is it's going to ask me, well, do I want to load the ANSI A title block that we created or the ANSI B title block? Well, for this drawing, we're going to use the ANSI A title block, and we'll choose OK. And you'll notice that it created a brand new tab at the bottom called ANSI A title block. And it gives me a quick little pop-up view of the object, but there's no drawing here. So here's the deal. Let's double click. Well, we haven't talked about the hokey pokey. When we're using title block templates, we if you remember we created a viewport inside this template. So if I double click inside, I'm inside what is known as the model tab now. I know you don't believe me. Take my word for it. You're actually working on the model surface. You're no longer in the layout. If I double click on the gray, the dark line goes away. I'm now working across the template and I'm on the layout space. So if I were to double click and I double click the wheel mouse or if I use the uh, zoom extents, my object is actually on the screen. So sometimes you'll bring the title block in, see nothing because it was magnified in the wrong area, but if I double click it'll magnify it in the correct area. The problem is is that it doesn't fully fit. Based on the double click scale I lost some of my dimensions so we'll need to adjust the scaling factor of this in just a second. So remember double click in double click out. Well, that sounds like the hokey pokey song. Right foot in, right foot out, right foot in, shake it all about. Yeah so if we double click in we can double click out double click in, we can pan it all about. Do the hokey pokey, spin yourself around. That's what it's all about. So now when you remember hokey pokey, you'll remember how to apply layouts. Double clicking in, double clicking out. When you double click in, this is where we can adjust the scaling factor. Down on the bottom of our screen here, in this annotation area, there is a scale factor that's currently set. Mine is 0.877929. That has absolutely no relevance to me. So we need to set this at a scale that has relevance. 
And to do that, I can click the down arrow next to it. Ah, look at these scale factors. We can go one to one, half scale, quarter scale. Well, let's try one to one. One to one, ooh, that did not help. Let's try half scale. Bingo, half scale will work. OK, as we continue down the process, let's try quarter scale. So you can see how it actually scales the object down in magnification. The physical object is still the original size on the model tab. So if I go to model tab, the object is still the same size. It has all the same dimensions. But in ANSI A, it visually scaled it down to fit. So let's go ahead back to half scale. And we're all set. So now we know how to double click in, double click out, double click in, and we can change our scale factor. Well that scale factor will have to get replicated here because we have a model scale value and your drawing name and number and so forth. So we'll edit the title block in just a second. If I press and hold the wheel of the mouse, I'll get the I'll get the pan icon and I can shift this anywhere on the screen. If I roll the mouse, uh oh, that changes the scale. I've got to go back here and set that scale again. So just be aware that if you would manipulate the physical size in or out by rolling the wheel mouse, you'll have to go back and reset the scale to a relevant scale factor. Once you double click out, that scale factor is set. Now I'm working above my drawing, I can go and edit my text, which in this case is going to be 1 to 2, or half scale. It's the date, sheet 1 of 1, drawing name, my name, ANSI A is the sheet size. And so we've actually applied this title block now. So what do we do with the setup for printing and for other things like this? Well, if you think about it, when we're printing from layouts, we're, pr we're printing the sheet. The sheet is the exact sheet that we want to see when we print. And remember when we talked about layouts, that dotted line is your printable area. The solid line is the first object line that you have. So as long as your object lines are within that printable area, it should print out. We can control a lot of this through the Page Setup Manager, which controls what the piece of paper looks like, and the plotting information. So we can go ahead and choose Plot, and I can send it to the plotter itself. And the idea behind Plot is that we can control what printer we're at, um, the paper size, but in, realist, but in reality here, I want it to print the layout. I want the layout to print at 1 to 1. I never want to scale this because we scaled the image in the viewport. So this is always going to print one to one. I wanted to make sure that you realize this so that way you don't mess it up by trying to set a scale factor here. Choose OK, it fires it off to the printer and everything is good. You'll notice when we double click out there is no ability to change any scaling factors. That only occurs when we're double clicked inside the viewport itself. So again, we can delete these layouts that we're not going to use. So when we package the drawing, it works really well. Now, one of the things that I did want to share is how to print this to a PDF file. And there's different PDF drawing managers but there's also a plot ability inside AutoCAD for that. So I'm going to right mouse click and choose plot. And you can also go to the big letter A and choose plot. Either place, print will do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and print this. And so when I, if I want to see what it looks like, well I can see what it looks like as a plot preview. Because I'm looking at the layout and that's the advantage of it. So instead of my printer, I'm going to actually choose PDF file. And there's different ways that you can send it to PDF itself. Um, I've got a tool called DO PDF that works OK. You could also uh, drawing to PDF.pc3, which is the default AutoCAD PDF printer. So this is going to be an ANSI A. 
layout is going to be one to one. Our layout is going to be the area to plot. Scale factor is one to one. And it's going to save it as that PDF file. If you have multiple layouts, then you'll need to set up a um, the ability to do multiple plots to a PDF. So it's going to save it under my docs and we'll work from there. So as you can see, here's the PDF drawing. Now what happened was is that it got cut off. Why did it get cut off? It didn't cut off a lot, but it got cut off because the PDF printing dotted lines were outside, or our standard lines were outside of the PDF dotted line. So if you're going to be doing a lot of PDF printing, you'll want to adjust your title block for that PDF operating environment. To make that setting so it doesn't cause that problem, right mouse click on your NCA title block, go to your page setup manager, and modify your NCA title block, and change your printer because this is where it'll show up. So drawing to PDF is where we want to work with. The expanded A will choose OK. Now what it will do, notice what happened here is that it changed the surface area that we can print. So what I would have to do now is go in and stretch this side and move it. So let's do that. Remember we're double clicked out. We're going to stretch this side bring it in a little bit and we're over by about that much and then we'll move the whole thing so it's really important to pay attention to where the dotted lines are because the dotted lines tell the story of the print when you choose the PDF the PDF required more horizontal space than my printer that I had set up previously. So be aware that those kind of things may happen. So here's the before picture of the PDF where it got cut off and we'll show you the after picture here. Here's the after picture and if I set this up right we can do a side-by-side -side screen so you can see both. and I think that'll show up okay. You can see the other one is fully enclosed now where this one was a little bit off. So there you have it. When you're sending your files to PDF and creating title blocks, you need to look at the dotted lines in your layouts because they do tell the ultimate story. Have a great day and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.